So we've not long had our first free practice session since the summer break and in this video I'm going to break down what we've learned from all of that FP1 and FP2 running from the pecking order of the race pace to also the specific team and driver comparisons over the quality simulation laps. So here are your long run stints from FP1 uh, from left to right is fastest to slowest so as expected, we've got the McLarens very high up. Norris is leading. He's got about four tenths on Piastri in these long runs. Could there be setup differences? Yes, but it does look like Norris was slightly more comfortable. Norris was also more consistent than Piastri. We can see here with a bit of a tighter, tighter bubble of lap times, but also when looking at the standard deviation, uh, we can see Norris is the more consistent driver. This stroll stint here isn't very representative, but what stood out to me was actually this Carlos Sainz stint uh, for Williams. James Vowles afterwards, though, did say that they think they were running a bit lighter on fuel compared to others, so that could be why. Looking at other stints, we have got an Alonso stint here, which is pretty quick, and that is no surprise as well. The Aston Martin is looking significantly more comfortable than some of the other cars that it would usually be behind. Uh, Verstappen is still up there, but there's quite a gap. He's got an average of a 116 whereas uh, Norris has got a 15.5, and half a second a lap for a whole race will be pretty big. Russell's still up there, um, and then the Ferraris were actually very similar, although they put Hamilton out for a soft uh, long run uh, with Leclerc on the mediums. From there, it's pretty much what we'd expect the other drivers. Behrman did a very significant number of laps, we can see, but he was off the pace. This is a 16.7 compared to Norris with a 15.5. So now looking at how the laps actually unfolded, we've got uh, Verstappen's medium stint here in blue, uh, Hamilton in dotted red, uh, Piastri uh, here in dotted orange, which is slightly above Norris because Norris was overall a bit quicker. And you can see that every lap Norris did was quicker than um, Piastri's respective lap. Uh, interestingly, Hamilton's soft tyres were holding on, although it's not a great deal of laps, but still nine laps is, you know, relatively representative. Um, and Verstappen here had a bit of a spike, but was able to put in some very quick laps, which is interesting that even having done all of these laps here, he actually does come down to the pace of Norris, even though that's not what his overall average time would be suggesting. So now taking a look at some of the straight line performance, these are the average speed trap speeds on uh, each respective stint. Um, as expected, we've got Williams pretty high up. They've often been one of the more slippery cars. Ferrari are also doing pretty well. Um, McLaren is pretty customary to be a bit lower down. Generally, they make up all their time in the corners. Um, and uh, the Sauber we've also seen has been an incredibly draggy car, and this shines through. Um, we can also show that Verstappen and Sonoda in their Red Bulls aren't particularly quick in a straight line. Uh, they don't quite have that advantage that they had a couple of years ago. So now sticking with FP1, uh, we've got this chart here, uh, which shows the team performance in terms of um, the car characteristics. So along the bottom, we've got the mean speed of the car. So that means the quickest laps move over to the right, the slowest map, uh, laps move over to the left. Uh, and then we've got the top speed on the lap. So this is no longer the speed trap speed. This is the absolute maximum speed of the car around the whole lap. So this leads you to have areas of low downforce. Cars struggling for downforce will sit up here. Uh, cars which are very uh, inefficient will sit down here. High downforce here and then high, high efficiency up here. Um, so as expected, we've got McLaren here very far over on the right. They've got the quickest laps. Um, and then you've got this sort of uh, best of the rest group here forming between Aston, Red Bull and Mercedes. Uh, Ferrari is unfortunately for many uh, absolutely nowhere to be seen. Now when it comes to top speed, so absolute VMAX down the end of the straight, uh, we've actually got Kicksalva and Mercedes pretty much tied up at the top, uh, while Haas are really struggling. Um, McLaren again often sit in that middle sort of average um, with nothing special going on, although where they do pull it back is always mean speed, uh, because through the corners their minimum speeds, as we'll see shortly when we compare laps side by side, um, McLaren are just able to carry more speed pretty much everywhere if I'm completely honest. Um, and then we've got Kick struggling for downforce. Ferrari are also really struggling. Um, and we'll compare uh, Ferrari and McLaren shortly to just see where exactly that's happening. Now this, this plot here is very interesting seeing where which team is fastest. Uh, we can see mostly orange, um, or orange is definitely the most common color um, through a lot of these uh, medium, medium and high speed sections here around this massive, this is the banking around the, uh, that very banked last corner. Um, interestingly, Aston is actually picking up in quite a few places. So in this braking zone into turn one, um, and also, yeah, here here into that bank section. Um, also, also on the brakes here. So it seems like Aston are doing pretty well on the brakes. Um, and also in this medium speed section. So they've clearly got a decent bit of downforce. 
um, on the car, which this chart also shows. We can see other than McLaren, they are the furthest to the right. They've got the, the second best mean speed. Um, so that is making sense. And just for reference, all of these laps were set uh, all on the soft tire or using DRS and no one had tires more than six laps old. Now I want to look a little bit deeper into that one lap pace uh, by comparing uh, Norris's fastest lap uh, with Leclerc's fastest lap in FP2 once again. Um, and Leclerc was nine tenths off the pace, which is a very big chunk and we can see it form here around the lap. So this is the time delta and how the delta grows with each corner uh, around the whole lap. Um, it's incredibly short lived, Leclerc being ever so slightly faster than Norris and from there, wow. Um, interestingly, between sort of the turn one exit and actually into about turn eight, the gap changes incredibly little. And then uh, into turn nine, you have this massive jump of about four tenths uh, that Leclerc loses to Norris. And if we look at the speed trace, so this is just how, the, how fast the two cars are going. Um, you can just see here very obviously, um, Leclerc seems to break a lot earlier, uh, has to come off the power a lot earlier, whereas Norris is just carrying so much more speed. Uh, so that is through turn nine, uh, which is uh, this corner here. So I believe it's on the exit of this that uh, Lewis did one of his uh, 360s earlier. And speaking of Lewis, I just wanted to show that this wasn't uh, actually just a Leclerc mistake that caused this big jump in time. Um, because actually now, if we look at this, um, dotted line now as well, which is now Lewis's time. Uh, we can see this massive spike up as well uh, around that turn nine region. So it seems like McLaren just has a huge advantage over Ferrari there. Um, interestingly, Lewis until about turn eight was pretty much on par with Norris's time and then it all just falls away um, in pretty much exactly the same way as it did for Leclerc. Um, and looking a little bit more closely at some of the other areas on the track, um, we can see just into turn one, um, the McLaren is just able to carry more speed. Um, again here, turn two, uh, that McLaren line just sits higher than uh, both of those red lines. So I also wanted to introduce Alonso onto these charts because I think it's quite interesting to see um, actually just how quick he is. To be completely honest with you, if the uh, lap had ended about turn nine, we would have actually seen Alonso go quicker than Norris. Um, we can see he keeps incredibly close within a tenth here is about where it peaks. He keeps incredibly close all the way through the first sector. And then as we go into the second sector, Alonso is actually going a lot quicker than Norris. Um, unfortunately for him, there are some peaks. Again, we've got here about 10, 11, both Leclerc. There's a big peak here as Leclerc is a lot slower than Norris through this area. And so is Alonso. But interestingly, at the end of the lap, actually Leclerc, you see this line comes down slightly because Leclerc is actually going quicker. Um, and the same for Alonso, but to a greater extent. Um, but still the McLaren is the dominant car. If we look at, for example, the uh, minimum speeds through turn one, it's very clear McLaren and Norris are carrying the most speed out of anyone. Um, you've got Alonso sat then here in the middle and Leclerc is really struggling. And if we look at the track dominance comparing Alonso and Norris, it's actually a very large share for Alonso. We've got 70% of the lap. Alonso is actually going quicker. Now that's not to say Alonso has the quicker lap because there are smaller segments of the lap where Norris is just so much faster that it completely outweighs it. But you know, down the straight, it looks like Aston Martin, as we saw earlier, are pretty quick. Um, we've got Norris, however, is just making up time in these medium and slow speed corners also around here at the end of the lap. Um, and that is really doing it for him clearly. Um, if we look at braking performance, uh, Norris is getting a greater peak acceleration um, on the brakes. Um, and also, if we look here at the high speed corners versus low speed, interestingly, Alonso through the high speed is actually on average quicker, just, just slightly. Um, but then in the low speed, Norris is making it up. Uh, making up the difference uh, with a 2.32 kilometer an hour advantage. Um, obviously you spend more time in those slow speed corners generally um, and some of these advantages are quite big. You see in turn nine he's actually 10 kilometers quicker on, min on, on minimum speed. So finally then just to bring Piastri back in to look at the championship battle I guess, uh, keeping Alonso's lap in here for reference. Um, Piastri of course does go ever so slightly quicker than Norris overall, uh, but he's actually got quite a lot of margin um, on Norris until about turn 9 where he starts to lose it and that's where he from there only ends the lap just 0 0.022 quicker. Um, and towards the end of the lap it seems like perhaps his tyres were feeling it 
Um, you see uh, into turn 12 here, I've zoomed in, um, and you can see he's later on the brakes. He's got a higher speed, to, um, which is being carried in, a higher speed. Um, but then on the exit, he's just very slow to pick up the power, pick up the speed, perhaps an oversteer moment. Um, and we see this in a couple of places. Um, here again, that line just sitting slightly below um, where he'd want it to be, uh, below Norris's speed. Um, but ultimately, these two are very closely matched. Uh, I was just surprised to see quite how much pace uh, Norris, uh, Norris was losing, actually, uh, in this first half, although pretty much he's gained all of it back uh, in the second half of the lap. And then even looking at their average peak deceleration, so on the brakes, they are so closely matched, 2.63 versus 2.69 here. Um, and as well, high speed, low speed corners, there is such little between them. They are generally trading blows um, with a pretty much equal amount of corners. It's 4.3 on the high speed, 3.4 um, on the low and medium speed. So it is incredibly tight between them, and I think we could see a very close battle. Overall then, I think we've got quite an interesting Grand Prix weekend on our hands. Um, it looks like Aston Martin will be in the mix for qualifying, but I do expect them to fall away uh, in the race if these uh, practice sessions are anything to go by. It looks like Mercedes might be struggling on one lap a little bit, but won't be too bad in the race. Um, Ferrari have definitely got some work to do. Um, and I think we could maybe see some surprises from Williams. We'll see perhaps that FP1 running was just because of low fuel, um, but perhaps we could see some good results for them. Um, and then, of course, it's going to be incredibly tight between the two McLaren drivers. I do think in the race they'll pull away, um, but we'll see what they can do. And of course, we've always got Max Verstappen to count on in qualifying as well. So that's all for this video. If you have enjoyed it or found it useful, please comment below uh, what you'd like to see in the future and your predictions for this race. But thank you for watching.